You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. Well, uh, really excited to come and share a message with you today, particularly today is our, our Building the House Miracle offering. And uh, I just I just really want to, this, this message will do two things. It'll finish off our Good, Good Steward series and and sort of lead us into, into what we're doing, Miracle Offering as well. But to sum up our Good, good Steward series, I, I just want to encourage you with this, the Good Stewards steward heaven and steward earth. Just to, just to kind, whatever comes from heaven, whatever God's given us on earth, the good things he's given us, he's called us to steward all of those things, amen. But to take it a step further than that, good stewards steward heaven to the hearts of earth. So what we've been called to do as followers of Jesus. I'll say it one more time. Good stewards steward heaven to the hearts of earth. That's what God's called us to do. And in, in saying that, good stewards take responsibility for what God gives them and they make sure they pass it on to others. It's good, right? It's really, really good. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 21. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. In other words, it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world. And we talked about definitions of stewardship. One of those definitions was a shepherd. Someone who's got a shepherd's heart. God was shepherding the world. You and I, he was shepherding us, stewarding us through his son, Jesus. Not even keeping records of their transgressions. And he has entrusted us to the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God. Who remembers in our, in our first message, we, we talked about in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, we talked about that God has entrusted us as trustees of his estate but now he takes it a step further and he entrusts us with the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God how, how powerful is that he takes it a step further heaven and earth has been entrusted to those who love Jesus we are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world as, as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips so we tenderly plead with you on, God's, uh, on Christ's behalf. Turn back to God and be reconciled to Him. For God, made the on, for God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us, so that, so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with Him. See, this is one of the reasons why we're so committed to sharing the good news of Jesus with everyone in our world amen we're so grateful that he loved us we're so enamored with the fact that he loved us that even though that we were without hope even though that we were slaves to sin god sent jesus to redeem us such a thing of beauty he became sin for us to reconcile us so that we could become the righteousness of jesus if that doesn't excite you I don't know what is going to excite you. You know, this, this next passage of Scripture sums it up so well why we're faithfully and actively joining our faith and actions to the commission that he gave us. This is the, the now, the, the future, and the, the fact that we're committed to expansion. This is, this is like the core reason why we're so committed to it. 1 John 4.19 our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Why are we so focused on others and sharing the hope and the good news of Jesus with others? Our love for others is a grateful response to the fact that he loved us. Even though we were still with sin, he loved us so much, sent Jesus. And our response is, how can we help you in this, Jesus? How can we join with you in this, Jesus? You, you may have heard something similar to this over the past three messages, but 
We're, we're called to steward all that God has provided us with. Amen. And we clarify again all the good things yeah. that he's provided us with. Not the things that we've gone and chased after and tried to pull close to ourselves because we desperately know that all the good things that he has actually brought into our world. We're called to steward those things well. And that reminder, just, just a reminder, if it, I know we, we haven't talked about this in this series, but we've talked about it in previous series. That the reminder being that God only gives good and perfect things. James 1 verse 17 sums this up perfectly. Where it says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a a shifting shadow. Every good and perfect thing comes from him and him alone. So often he uses different ways of getting it to us, amen? Just like we heard from Andre Nevet's testimony this morning. It came through a place where they didn't think it was going to come through. Probably thinking like one of us is going to get an awesome like promotion at work and that will be taking you. God had a different plan at play. Different plan at play. He brought the finances that you needed, but without any extra hours at work. Praise God. Yeah. How good is if it could be like that every time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I simply want to encourage all of us today around what we're choosing to sow into today. I'm not talking about what you're choosing to sow, what we're choosing to sow into today, amen. That, I think that's, that's more important that we're aware of what it is, not how much. Yeah, because what it is is way more important than everything else. You know, we're, we're choosing to sow finance, but we're also tr- uh, choosing to, to sow ourselves. We're choosing to sow ourselves into today with our heart and our soul and our hard work to, to run pop-up church services in four strategic locations around the region. This is, it's so very important that we understand this is, not, this is not about just finance. This is about us saying, you know what? I, I, I love the commission so much that I'm actually going to join God, join Jesus, join the local church in the commission that's set before us. And if that means we're going to go out into the communities and run pop-up church services, then I'm sowing into that today, not just with my finances, but with me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to invite people. I'm going to let Geelong know that there's church services happening in their area, and I'm going to be there to actually make it happen. Amen? It's good, isn't it? When you hear it like that, it's like, oh, this is not not just an offering Sunday. This is, I'm offering me and I'm offering my finances and my time. And if I've got any skills that can help on that day, I am offering that as well. You know, in Luke 8 verse 8, it says this. Still other seed fell on fertile soil. This seed grew and produced a, a crop that was a hundred times as much as had been planted. When he had said this, he called it anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Now, this is going to become more apparent where this scripture ties in as we go. But what I will say around this is we are committed to cultivating, preparing, planting, and watering. With every, with every part of ourselves, we, we are committed to it. And verse 15 of Luke 8 tells the story of the, of the church and individuals who are so committed, unrelentingly committed to, to commit to the Great Commission. Those who truly believe that Jesus is the hope of the world and the local and global church is part of God's plan to steward and shepherd all that is God's. In Luke 8, 15, it says this, And the seeds that fell on good soil represent honest and good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. So we're not just talking about wheat. We're not just talking about money. We're talking about... Because the harvest... From a biblical sense, the harvest is the hearts of all humanity. That's what we're patiently committed to. That's what we're clinging to. It's like we will will hang in here. We will sow ourselves into seeing hearts 
restored back into relationship with God. That's the huge harvest that we want. Amen. Because that's the huge harvest that God wants. That's why he sent Jesus for the hearts of mankind to be brought back into relationship and reconciled with him. Amen. You know, lastly, let me encourage you with this, with this second point of what we're joining with. When I say lastly, we're not at the end. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, it's going to be awesome. So much coffee after. No, sorry. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You know, when Jesus, uh, when Jesus went to the temple on the Sabbath and announced that he was fulfilling the scriptures, um, this, is, this is what he announced when he, when he went, went to the, the Sabbath, uh, temple on the Sabbath. Luke 4, 18 and 19. This is, this is what Jesus announced. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has chosen me to tell good news to the poor and He has sent me to tell prisoners that they're free and, he's, and to tell the blind that they can see again. He sent me to free those who have been treated badly and to announce that the time has come for the Lord to show His kindness. And that fulfills the scriptures that are in Isaiah. We're joining with this. When we join together as the church on commission, we're joining with this. We're proclaiming the very thing that Jesus came to fulfill in the scriptures. We're joining in, in proclaiming that. And then in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, Jesus gives us a great commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. I have given you to steward the commands. Amen. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We're joining with this. That's what the church of Jesus Christ has been called to join with. Anything else is not part of the central reason. A Jesus central church is based around the commission of Jesus Christ and sharing the good news of hope of Jesus, that Jesus sent by God, went to the cross, died, buried, resurrected on the third day for the forgiveness of our sins. This is what we're joining with. This is the good news. Because of Jesus, we can step back into relationship with God. Know his grace, amen? We're joining with this. And lastly, to round out our, our Good Steward series and launch us into our miracle offering. That's not the end, by the way. To launch us into our miracle offering giving today. 1, 1 Corinthians, verse 3, 7 to 9. I, I, I love this passage of scripture. Jo join with me in this. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is God makes the seed grow. So today, there's people in this room who are going to get their envelope or we're going to get their envelope from home or we're going to get their card or going to get their phone and transfer it. Maybe you're doing, doing it later at home. Maybe you're going to do it over the next four weeks like, like I'm doing. Whatever you're doing, it's not important who does the planting and the watering. We're, 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 going, to, we're going to plant some finances. When we do our pop-up services, we're going to plant ourselves in the middle of our community and we're, we're going to water through this and we're going to water through that. It's not important who does what? What's important is God is the one who makes the seed grow. Amen. It's just up to us to be faithful. It's just up to us to patiently cling to the hope that Jesus is the hope of all humanity. Amen. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. The same purpose is the commission that Jesus gave us. And both will be rewarded for their hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. We've talked about that in, in, in months past. But I want, I want to say this again. We are committed to cultivating, preparing, planting and watering as God grows what is cultivated. As God grows what is prepared, as God grows what is planted and watered, we are committed to it. Amen, as a church. You know, maybe for some of you today, it's like, oh, I think it's so awesome what you're doing. I, I just want to like, applaud you and cheer you on. You know, I, 
that I'm, I'm so grateful that, you, that we've got your encouragement. What I'd love more than your encouragement is you to actually sow your life into the commission that Jesus gave us. That, that would be awesome. If you could just say, when it comes to pop-up services, when it comes to going into my workplace, when it comes to going into my school, my university, when it comes to going into my family, I'm going to be a beacon light of hope that represents Jesus in any place that he's called me to be. Amen. So for each and every single one of us, you know, as, as we join today, as we join in the coming weeks, you know, for those of us who have, maybe some of you have been putting money aside all year, maybe others, you're like, oh yeah, that's right, it's Miracle Offering Sunday. <laughs> it's okay, you can give today and you can give over the next four weeks as well. But I, I truly, I truly believe this, that we are stepping into today. We're stepping in today because in the past, there are many people who went before us and they made sacrifices and they, they gave from a heart of worship and they gave for moments like this building, for moments like us being in local schools, for moments like us having small groups. They partnered together many, many years ago. They believed that Jesus called them. And today, we get to do the same for now, not just the future, for now, for the future and for the expansion that God wants to see happen in local churches all over this city. Amen. In the words of the master from Matthew 25, 23, and I, I, I've loved this, this parable here. You know, Verse 23, the master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount. Now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. I, I want to encourage us that even as we join our hearts together, our hope together, our finances together, ourselves together, that because of us doing this, what comes from this are going to be powerful redeeming moments of reconciliation in the hearts of people. Because that, this is the reason, amen. This is the reason why the local church exists. This is the reason why we exist, to see people come back into relationship with God. I just want to, I'll say this when it comes to now future ex expansion. You know, these are the days that we have prayed for. We've prayed for these days. In, in years past, you know, there's many, many people who've been in this church for, for a fair while. People, some people have been here for over 30 years. I've been here for 16 years, eight, 17 years, 18, I don't know. I've been here for a while. <laughs> there are many of you who have joined in the last decade. Some of you joined just recently. But these are the days that we prayed for. We prayed for when we were in a, in a school in Newcombe, we prayed that we would have a place to call our church home. And God, God's provided faithfully, defining moments. Some of you may have read the defining moments on the website. But these are the days that those who came before us prayed for the future as well. And we're walking in the promises of God. We're walking in their prayers but we get to do the same, amen? These are those days. So often we don't stop long enough. To, we, we keep praying for the future. I just, I'm laboring on this for a little bit this morning because we keep praying for the future. But when you actually stop and you take a step back and you look at the beautiful people that we have in our church, you look at the beautiful families that we have in our church, you look at the marriages that are happening in our church, you look at the marriages that are about to happen in our church. You look at the kids that have been raised and have now had their kids dedicated in our church. You look at the building and the land and the five acres of land that the church, you, us, own down the road. God has plans. Yes, he has plans for the future, but they're being fulfilled already. The local church is growing and people are getting, even in the last month, there's people who are sitting in this room right now who have been saved and made a decision to follow Jesus in the last month. Amen. I'm not going to point you out and make you... <laughs> Don't point to me. I'm not going to do that. It's okay. I'm not even looking at you right now. <laughs> but God is proving faithful with the prayers of old and our heart's desire to fulfill the commission now. We need to revel in the moment. Amen.
That's, 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 that's what, what I'm getting at this morning. Um, just as Emily comes this morning, I, d- I just want to just remind, remind us today that when we talk about now, we're talking about our building. We're talking about stewarding our building. I know that for some of you, you've heard this already, you've read it. For some of you, you said you were going to read it, but we're, we're here and you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so we'll just, we'll just, I won't read the whole thing. I'll just, um, we're talking about steward, the stewardship of our building, what God has provided for us, the defining moments that he's, he's graced us with, with this building, but we need to take care of it. Amen. And so we're going to, we're going to pull together and we're going to, we're going to take care of everything that he has graced us with because we have a strong understanding of God's miracle provision. And when it comes to God's miracle provision, you don't treat it with shame. You take care of the miracle, amen. You take care of what he actually gives you. You treat it like you've just been given eyesight. You treat it like you've just been called off your mat and you can walk again because it's the miracle that is provided. We understand that this God, God's miracle provision in, in the past, but he's called us to steward it now. And it's our desire to steward the now so that we can make room for future provision and miracles. Why do I say that? If you don't steward the miracles, why would he release any more? We need to steward it now to make way for what needs to come. Amen. When we talk about the future, we're talking about paying money off our loan to make space for future mission and vision. Who knows that to add buildings on and to add rooms on it, it costs money. Amen. And this, we're not talking about money, but what we're talking about right now is we want to make sure that we do everything within our power now so that when we need extra rooms, we're not stressing about it. Good stewards prepare for the future. They don't just get there and go, oh, yeah. Okay, everybody, can we? Oh, no, no, no. We're going we're gonna to walk this journey together and be ready for the future. We'll still be required to step into faith because God wants our hearts. Amen. But we've been called and mandated to share the good news of Jesus. You know, I truly believe that by paying our loan down, we, we're aiming to be ready for the future things. I, tr- I truly believe that those future things are the things that God has prepared for us and planned for us. This is about getting ready to make space so that the mission and vision can be outworked. Already, I just want to encourage you already, there's some Sunday mornings where our, our children's church area is beginning to to get tight for space praise god amen like that's awesome that's awesome and the third thing that we're that we're giving into is expansion church planning we we truly believe that if we're called to do anything is to share the, the good news of jesus christ just as the band begins to come this morning you know the the church planning the expansion part is the commission and I, I just want to encourage us. We are committed to, I'll say it again, we are committed to growing, planting, watering so that God can make those things grow. Amen. Those things being more small groups in strategic areas, hopefully church locations in strategic areas where we see local churches begin to actually take care of new suburbs that are popping up all over all over our city you know right right now uh, in in ocean grove there there is no spirit-filled pentecostal church available for the residents of ocean grove and some of them are driving here every sunday morning awesome that's great but let's be honest the suburb is growing out of control praise god that is growing out of control but we need to actually be able to provide church services more than that, we need to actually put a beacon of light in the middle of the suburb so that people who don't know Jesus, people who have never heard the good news of Jesus Christ, can actually respond and be reconciled to him. Because that's what we've been actually called to do through Jesus. Amen. Same goes for the other areas that we're talking about. So before we before we give today, I, I just want to encourage you that there's no compulsion no pressure to contribute like that's not some that's not a place where we're coming from uh, instead I, I hope that what, what I've shared around 
this teaching and this stewardship series and the heart of what God's called us to do. Instead, I prefer that your hearts join with that rather than feeling pressure and compulsion. Amen. Our hearts are joined with the commission and the choice of getting to contribute. Just as everyone's eyes are closed this morning, maybe you might be in this place and, and you don't know Jesus. You, you don't know what it is to, to be reconciled into relationship with God, to know His forgiveness, to not be a slave to your sin anymore, but be fully set free, to have new vision in your eyes, to not be a prisoner. That's why Jesus came to set us free, to give us hope. Just as everyone's eyes closed this morning, if if that's you, I want to give you the opportunity. You know, Jesus went to the cross. He died, was buried and rose again to take our sin, but also then to give us freedom and hope in God. He became our sacrifice. You You might be in this place you don't know Jesus. But this morning, after hearing the hope of Jesus, after hearing what what God did for you and I in sending Jesus, that, yeah, I I want that hope. It says in Romans 10 verse 9 that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so as simple as that, today I'm going to give you the opportunity to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him. So with everyone's eyes closed, on the count of three, if that's you, you want, you want a, a personal relationship with Jesus, you want to be forgiven of your sin and walk in relationship with Him. On the count of three, I'm going to invite you to just lift your hand up. And once you put your hand up, you can put it back down. On the count of three, is there anyone today? One, two, three. Anyone who said, yeah, I, 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 need, I need a personal relationship with Jesus. I can't do it through someone else. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. You can put your hand up once you put it. That is so good. So, and yes, thank you. Is anybody else today? So yeah, I, I, I want to walk with Jesus. I want a personal relationship with Jesus. Two or three people have put their hand up already. Is there anybody else? So yeah, that's me. If you're, if you're watching at home, this is for you as well. You can respond in this moment right now. If you're watching online, this is for you. Is there anybody else? So yeah, I... I want to know the hope of Jesus. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, just with our eyes closed this morning, if you've put your hand up or or you wanted to put your hand up, because at the end of the day, your hand isn't important. What's important is confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart. That's what's important, that Jesus is Lord. So I'm going to invite you to pray a prayer after me. The whole church is going to join in with you to help you pray that prayer. If you're watching online, pray this prayer with us as well. Asking Jesus to come into your heart. Be forgiven of your sin. What do you pray this prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross. You were buried and rose again for the forgiveness of my sins. I repent of my sin. I turn to you. I surrender my life. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God rose you from the dead. Today, Lord Jesus, I choose to follow you all the days of my life. And I walk in your forgiveness and I walk in your freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Let's put your hands together. Celebrate those people that prayed that prayer, who responded today. It's awesome. You know, if you prayed that prayer on the way out, one of our our team's going to be on the door and they've got a little booklet for you and it just it lets you know what to do next. We would love to talk with you, connect with you, encourage you in following Jesus. It doesn't just stop here. You actually actively choose to follow Jesus. from this. If you're watching online and you responded, can I encourage you to go to gc.org.au forward slash first steps. All the same information is there. Fill out the form. We'd love to be in contact with you. It's awesome, right? When people find Jesus, find hope. It's so good. It's what, it's what we exist for as a church. So excited for you today. 